Good morning. We're missing uh, Pastor Duff. He's in Australia playing with kangaroos. Kangas. If you're friends with him on Facebook, he has pictures of him and Denise and I, who else was there? Taylor. Taylor. Taylor petting the kangaroos in the outback. <laughs> so cute. You should see him. Imagine that. And even <laughs> one of them had a little baby in the pouch. That was very Ma cute. Super. I hope you had an opportunity <laughs> to see that. But we're missing Pastor Duff, and please lift him up this week in, in your prayers that he has a, a, a safe trip over there and a refreshing visiting with his relatives. So we everyone's filing in. We're going to do some music singing this morning. And uh, I'm going to ask Maggie yes. if she'll open us up with a little prayer, Maggie. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Let us bow our heads and... Lift up the name of Lord Jesus right now. Heavenly Father, precious God, the one we call Abba, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for each other. And, Lord, we especially thank you for Amen. Jesus Christ, our Savior, who Amen. died for our sins and took our punishment, Lord, that we would never be able to. So, Father, now as we gather, we just ask that your spirit would be among us, that your presence would be felt that you would lead us into a place of worship to meet you, Lord, that you would be with Pastor Absolutely. Kay as she delivers the message, Lord, that we would just feel the great spirit of you in our hearts and throughout us, Lord, and that we would never be afraid to give the reason why we believe in you, Jesus. Again, Lord, we thank you in all things. In Jesus' precious name, Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Stand together. You are not alone if you are lonely. When you feel afraid, you're not the only. We are all the same in need of mercy to be forgiven and be free. It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. Whoa, all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. If you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. Strong, you know, love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. And He so loved the world, He sent His Son to save us all. And all the people said, Amen. Whoa, all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for His love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. Blessed all the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed all the persecuting and the pure in heart. Blessed all the people hungry for another star. For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. said amen Whoa, all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends well all the people said amen yes all the people said amen Whoa, all the people said amen give thanks to the his love never ends, and all the people said amen. That's right. Well, all the people said amen. Hey, you guys awake out there or what? Everybody's like looking at us like, um, just because Duff's not here doesn't mean we can't have fun. Come on, let's stand up. 
Let's do this one. It's a lot of fun. Come on. This is amazing. Great. You ready? Come on, guys. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all peace. Who shakes them over with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King of all peace. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of all kings yeah. who rules the nations who truth and justice shine the sun in all of his brilliance the king of glory the king of all Now stand back up again. Shake hands with somebody that you that you do know or you don't know. <laughs> Greet each other this morning. Welcome to the house of God. Okay, as we gather back together, we have a couple of announcements this morning. 
we need to pay attention to. Most of them are up front. I'm going to let you read them, have fun, see if you can decipher what they are. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recap something that happened yesterday around here. The ladies had their first breakfast tea. Yeah. And all right, ladies. My wife came home and said there were 26 of them. And so that was a major success in the morning, and they decided they're going to do it every month. Yes, if you missed out on your opportunity last yesterday, we're gonna, ladies are going to start having a breakfast and tea the second Saturday of every month. So we want to get everybody involved. So it was a fun time, so we want to have more ladies next time. Thank you. Um, one more thing, just be thinking about praying. If you would, how many prayer partners, children, you're going to prayer partner with this year? We're going to be doing that coming very soon. We're in the process of getting the new bookmarks made. So we'll be having uh, prayer partners with the children, and we'll be doing monthly activities with them. Um, last year was a learning process, so we're going to be learning a little more and getting to know our kids more this year. Thank you. Okay, uh, Pastor Bobby Wingate will be speaking next Sunday. Yay! Then as Duff returns, uh, he will be starting a new series uh, towards the holiday time of year. And uh, that's an exciting time for Christianity. Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas. And uh, thank, or December is going to be very busy around here. We have a couple children's programs. We have, obviously, the Christmas Eve service. We're already planning on those things. So you be planning and praying that we do the right things that God would have us to do. I don't think there are any other announcements. So at this time, we will have our ushers come forward for his tithes and our offerings for the kingdom building at Light and Life Church. Let's pray. Father, we are indeed thankful for what you mean to us. We're thankful for everything you provide for us. And in this place, we are thankful for a place to come and worship you as our Lord and Savior. Thank you. In thy name we pray. Amen.
standing. We're going to do cannons next. Who doesn't like cannons? What an awesome song. You are holy, great and mighty, the moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever. My heart will sing of how great you are. It's falling from the clouds, a strange and lonely sound. I hear it in the thunder and the rain. It's a ringing in the skies, like cannons in the night. As the music of the universe plays, we're singing, You are holy. Great and mighty, the moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, but still you love me. Forever my heart will sing of how great you are. Oh, beautiful and the song of galaxies is reaching far beyond the Milky Way. Let's join in with the sound. Come on, let's sing it out as the music of the universe plays. Sing it, you are holy, great and mighty. The moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, but still you love me. Forever my heart will sing of how great you are. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. stars declare who you are I'm so unworthy but still you love me forever my heart will sing of how great oh you are holy great and mighty the moon and the stars declare who you are I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever. My heart will sing of how great you are. How great. Give it up to the Lord. Father God, we thank you today. Um, we thank you, Lord, that you are beautiful and free and that you help us to feel closer to you, Lord. You're larger than this universe. You've created everything that we can touch, that we can smell, that we can see, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for the children. So, Father, we just thank you every day for everything that you do for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have a very special treat in some baby and child dedications today. Pastor Bobby Wingate's going to come up and lead in that. But I wanted to relate to all of you in the sanctuary that this young man grew up in this church. 
he no longer is here. He's down in hurricane land, uh, meaning Florida. But uh, the children are all here today. One of the great, uh, one of the grandparents, and of course Betsy and Mike, very loyal and faithful members of the church. Bobby. Thank you, Howard. I was a little confused at first when he said young man grew up in the church. I was going to have to correct him that I didn't grow up in the, then I realized he's talking about Mike. So Mike and Nikki and uh, kids, grandparents, great grandma, if y'all want to come on up, we're going to go up on the platform so everybody can see. We're the grandparents. Betsy, get up. Okay, well, come on. You don't have to, but Betsy, you do. <laughs> well, one of the privileges of being a pastor is the ability to do baby dedications. We have to do so many other things, you know, make sure that janitor is doing their work, make sure that the building fund is working, make sure that everybody's happy with the length of the sermon uh, next week. Come and tell me if you are. Um, you have to do all of these different things, and it's good to have a nice break and have a dedication of children. Now, it's not just a baby dedication we're doing today, but it is children dedication, because we're dedicating three young people to the Lord. And we're setting up for the photo opportunities. Get out of the way. Okay. <laughs> all right. Dear friends in Christ, God through Moses made covenant with Israel, saying to the people, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. In the days of the new covenant, Christ Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. Do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And on the day of Pentecost, the apostle Peter declared regarding the salvation given through Christ, the promise is to you and to your children. It is therefore our privilege to present these children to the Lord and our duty to raise them in his ways. These parents now bring these children and offer them in dedication and pledge in the presence of this congregation to bring them up in the Lord's discipline and instruction. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who has made, who has made saving covenant with your people and who out of your loving kindness has ordained that they should live before you in families, we thank you that it is our privilege to dedicate our children to you in steadfast hope that they will cleave to your covenant and live in your glory. We entreat you for these children that they will be delivered from the power of sin and Satan, be set apart to you by the power from the Holy Spirit. We pray for these parents that they may be given divine aid and that both by instruction and example they may lead these children in the way of everlasting life. And so all may come in unity together to your eternal kingdom. We pray for this congregation that we may fully uh, discharge our duties both to parents and children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, Mike, Nikki, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Do you in the presence of God in this church solemnly dedicate these children to the Lord? We do. Good. Good. Will you endeavor to live a life before these children that will give witness to your faith in Jesus Christ? We will. Do you accept the authority of the Old and New Testaments as the word of God? We do. And using those, out of those testaments, out of the scripture, will you endeavor diligently to teach these children the commandments and prophets, promises of the Most High God so that your children may come early to personal faith in Jesus Christ? We will. Next. Now to the congregation. 
Let us acknowledge our duty to support this family with, with our prayers and encouragement, thereby aiding the parents and the children to fulfill all that has been promised. The congregation will affirm your willingness to do this by standing. Good. Now, even as Joseph and Mary brought Jesus in the time of his infancy to the temple to present him to God, so now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we present Isabel, Oliver, and... Isla. <laughs> All, well, actually, for more than a week, for a month, I, Isla has a, a unique spelling of your name, don't you? Yeah. And uh, as somebody whose name is really Bobby, not Robert, I've grown up with that, and I've also worried that I will do it wrong, and I would say the wrong thing. <laughs> so instead, I just froze. But Isla we dedicate you to the Lord. <laughs> and in an act of dedication, we present these children in an act of dedication to God with a prayer that at an early age in life, they may experience his justifying and sanctifying grace. Amen. Now I've asked Pastor Becky to come and to pray for us as a congregation as we support these children and this family and to pray for the children. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are called your children. Lord, we thank you for this precious family. Lord, what an honor to grow up in the church. Lord, we pray for each one of these children that are being dedicated to you today. May they be a blessing not only to their family, but to their church body as well. Lord, I thank you that they can represent you. Lord, as a congregation, may we help encourage each of the children around us. Lord, I pray that you would bless them, keep them safe, and that you would just help this family as they strive to learn more and more about you as they teach their children. And Lord, we thank you that you have called us into the ministry. Lord, thank you for this family that it spans generations in the church. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I present to, let's see, can I give these to the kids? Isabel, here's your certificate. Oliver, you get one. And I love we're going to give you a certificate to mommy. Okay. Let us remember our prayers and our commitments and say congratulations to these children. Give them a hand. Good morning. First of all, I want to say what an honor and privilege it is to, to be able to go to children's church. Not every church has a children's church, so we are so blessed to have people who will work and teach the children. Today we're going to be talking about God's timing. Timing is something that everybody has, something that we all deal with, that we all relate to. Before we begin looking into God's word, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help each of us to be listening closely to your words, to your scriptures, and I pray that each person here will be encouraged and blessed and strengthened. I pray that you will help us to overcome fear, worry, anxiety, and trust in your timing for our lives. 
We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, learning about God's timing in our life. God does not want us to live in fear. He wants us to trust in his timing for every detail of our lives. Psalm 32, 8 says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. What a wonderful promise that is. Part of trusting in God's timing involves patience. Is your timing the same as God's? No. Do you enjoy waiting for things? Are you happy to have a slow clerk at the checkout stand? How about slow traffic when you're in a, in a hurry? How about road rage? Now, I just got to say a little profound insight I got recently about road rage. Two people are leaving a store, and one holds the door open for the other. They both smile at each other and say thank you. Then they go in the parking lot and get in two different cars and drive out on the street. Suddenly, they're not friendly anymore. <laughs> it's a whole different situation. So if you ever deal with road rage, just remember that little story. Thank you for holding the door for me. <clears throat> Have you ever been a doc in a doctor's waiting room so long that you thought when you came out there should be a parking place with your name on it? <laughs> yes, I've been there, sometimes an hour and a half. <clears throat> Let's look at the next scripture, James 5, 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. Is patience your favorite fruit of the Spirit, or do you like the other eight better? Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? No, we can't leave out patience. We've got to deal with that and work on it. Did you date the wrong person before you met your soulmate? I'm so glad that I waited for God's timing when he bought, brought Bobby and I together. We need to trust God's timing. Back in 2002, we were trying to buy a house. We found a house the realtor took us to, and it had many good qualities that we liked. And so we were thinking, this is it. We we're praying that this is what God has for us. Well, it didn't work out. And then we came to another house. Oh, this one also has good qualities. I like the colors. I like the pool. No, that one didn't work out. And then my husband insists that I should include this funny story. There was another house where Bobby and the real estate guy were all excited. Oh, look, this is great. This is great. Oh, we love this. And I didn't like it. And I said, I hope you two will be very happy here. <laughs> And then we found the right house. Now, here's another example of how God works. I was up till 1 a.m. on the computer looking at houses for sale. I mean, 12, another dozen, another dozen. The real estate guy took us to a house that was not on the Internet, and it was the right house. And we were very happy. It had all the features that we wanted. One little sentence that I had stuck on our refrigerator for a long, long time that really helped, and I think it will help you too. God is working behind the scenes preparing something just for you. God is working behind the scenes preparing something just for you. Okay, the next story I have is so amazing that you will hardly believe it, but it's true. We were ready to buy a second car in 2007. My husband got a job teaching at a charter school in Mesa, which was a 46-minute drive. So we needed a second car. So we went to a car dealer, one that my parents had gone to, so we felt we could trust them. We went out on the lot, and the very first car we passed, I thought, that's the right car for us. That's perfect. I just know that's the right car. Now, if any of you have ever bought a used car, you know that it takes three hours. So, three hours later, we're in that car, we have bought it, and we're driving home. It was a Dodge Intrepid. We got home and pulled into the driveway, and my husband said, 
why don't you look in the glove compartment and see if there's an owner's manual? Okay. So I opened the glove compartment, I pulled out the owner's manual, and I started turning pages, got to the cover, and the previous owner had accidentally left a credit card receipt with his signature in it. The name was Bruce McLaughlin. Back when this place was Deer Valley, he was the senior pastor's father. Now, some people would think that's a coincidence. No. <laughs> Out of all the millions of people and thousands of cars in the valley, we had just bought the senior pastor's parents' car. So that Sunday, we talked to them after church, and we said, come on out in the parking lot. We want to show you a car that we just bought. So Bruce went out with us, and Bobby said, doesn't that look like your car, like your old car? And he said, yeah, it does, except the color's a little different. <laughs> so anyway... Any time we have to worry, or every time we want to worry about something, or there's some problem going on in our life, we look at each other and say, remember the intrepid. <laughs> that story, to me, says God is in control of every detail of our lives. Just remember the intrepid. And also, the word intrepid means fearless. We're going to talk more about fear a little bit later. Okay. The next one is a funny story. How many of you knew George Burns and Gracie Allen? Oh, good. I'm not the only one. Okay. My personality and my sense of humor is a little bit like Gracie Allen's. So we wanted to go to the Japanese church, and we had applied for that, but it wasn't moving fast, and it hadn't happened yet. We hadn't been approved to go there. And then we got a call from the superintendent saying, how would you like to be pastors at the Glendale Church? And we both said, yes, that would be great. We're so excited. Well, Bobby's going to preach there on Sunday morning, and that'll be an audition, and the people will vote whether they want you to be their pastors or not. So we're waiting for Sunday morning. Friday night, late at night, I said to my husband, how about this? If it's God's will for us to have the Glendale Church, tomorrow when we go to the Broadway Music Theater, there will be an eggplant casserole on the menu. So the next day, we were at the Broadway Music Theater, and the waiter came up to take our order. And I said, what is the vegetarian entree? And he said, it's a type of lasagna made with eggplant. Now, I didn't remember at that point. My husband started laughing, and later he told me. I thought, oh, my goodness, that is amazing. So <laughs> we went to Glendale around 2007, and we were there for almost six years. And we really loved it. We had wonderful people there, and we were so thrilled. And then one of the most happy and one of the highlights of the time we were there was when Myra started bringing her Africans what a joy they brought to the church. It was just so alive and joyful, and we were so happy to have them. And we appreciate how they had to wait years to come to America. It's so wonderful that, that you are all here. Now, a couple of little things happened. Um, it was a very cold winter, and I was walking around the house, and it seemed like every where I, room I went into, I saw extra blankets laying around. I counted like about eight, and I said, why do we have all these blankets? We don't need all these blankets. Then Sunday morning, we were at church, and I went up to Myra. How are things going? And she said, the Africans are really hurting for blankets. So I bundled up those blankets, gave them to Myra, and she passed them out, and everybody was warm and cozy for the winter. <laughs> Another interesting thing, now I was a teacher for 16 years. I taught music in a public school. And the hardest thing is dealing with the junior high students. And some of you probably know that. Um, we had vacation Bible school and I taught the junior high class. And there were about a dozen kids in there around two big tables. And they were filling out their worksheets and writing Bible verses. And I saw one boy talking to the girl next to him, and I thought, well, that's normal. That's what junior high kids do in America. They talk and chat, 
have fun when they're supposed to be working. So I went over to see what was happening. He was asking the girl next to him to help him to make sure he had the Bible verse written correctly. That is so awesome. And I thought, I would just love to take these kids to my school and show American kids how to act and how to be respectful of God's word and learning the Bible. That was so neat. Okay. Pray that God will reveal his timing for you in whatever situation you are going through right now. Raise your hand if you're going through a situation right now. Yes, we all are. <laughs> okay. It might be something good and wonderful. Like our next baby granddaughter's due date is today. So we are really excited. We're going to have a third granddaughter. When our, uh, when our daughter found out, she started laughing and laughing at her brother. Just wait till they're all three teenagers. <laughs> we'll send them a sympathy card. But <laughs> so we are just waiting for that phone call. Last night, Bobby comes running in. I just got a text from John. Our sprinkler system has been put in the backyard. Oh, whoopee. Okay. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about mom's framed needlepoint. For many years, all the time we went to mom, mom and Bill's condo, she had this framed needlepoint with Ecclesiastes 3.1 written on it. And that verse says, to everything there is a season and to every purpose and a time to every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. And some of you probably know that my brother just passed away unexpectedly Wednesday morning. It was a huge shock. And so we're praying that lo the Lord will use us to really help his kids. He left behind three adult sons and daughters-in-law and a couple of children. So we're praying that God will use us to be able to share the Lord and minister to them. And, but all, for all those years, I thought, I don't understand why that's my mom's favorite Bible verse. And now I'm starting to understand it. Death and life, it's all part, part of life, part of what we go through. Well, another chapter in my life was when I finished teaching music for 16 years and I retired and I thought, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do next? And my husband said, how would you like to be a hospice chaplain? I said, really? I have to think about that for a minute. So we had dinner with Bob and Kathy Terrell. I said, tell me all about what it's like to be a hospice chaplain. So one of the requirements is I had to take six months training as a chaplain intern in the hospital, Bander Thunder, Thunderbird Medical Center. So I went there and, and served for six months and learned a lot, visited patients, prayed with them. It was a wonderful experience. I learned so much there. I learned a lot from watching the nurses, how they take care of people and how patient they are. And it's just amazing what the nurses and staff do. And while I was taking that class, I got a big notebook, a big binder to keep all my papers in, and I put a huge picture of a butterfly on the cover. And then I bought a new Bible cover with a huge butterfly, and I started thinking, hey, I'm going to go around and apply at different hospices all around the valley. Maybe that'll be a sign from God. Maybe there will be a butterfly on their logo or somewhere. And so I started thinking, watching for butterflies. And we, we drove around, and I applied at lots of different hospices, had some interviews, no butterflies anywhere. Then on November 8th, we went out to check on my parents, and my stepfather, Bill, had died. And so we gathered up Mom and brought her home with us. And Paul Miller and his boys helped move the furniture to get her, her bedroom set up. And so... We were cleaning out the condo that they had lived in, and we were going back and forth, taking things out, and we walked into the garage, and sitting there in the middle of all these boxes was a big container with a big pink butterfly on it. And I just started laughing. I said to Bobby, that's God telling me, yep, you're supposed to take care of mom. You're not going to be a hospice chaplain. Then another day we were in there, and I 
uh, carrying out boxes, and I went into what had been Bill's den, just boxes of books all around the room, a desk, bookshelf. Lying on the floor in the middle of the room was a huge tote bag with big, huge purple butterflies on it. And I started laughing again. I thought, okay, I know we're not supposed to put out a fleece. That's something you can argue about. But sometimes God does things like that just to encourage us or tell us, tell us that's what I want you to do. So that's my, that's my um, ministry now is taking care of my mom, and it's been almost four years. And you all know she is so sweet and wonderful. She's perfect. So I have to work really hard to take care of her as she deserves. That's right. So all that time, six months in the hospital watching the nurses, I think about that and I know how to do things. And if I'm not sure about something, I will ask Maggie, who is also a nurse. <laughs> okay. Another thing that happened to me about God's timing is an experience I had with my vocal cords. I sang solos all the time for years, for my entire life. When I was a child, I went around the house singing, Broadway musicals, everything. And then two years ago, my singing voice started to disappear. I could still talk okay, but I couldn't sing anymore. And I thought, I probably ruined my vocal cords from 16 years of teaching in school because I had to sing and talk to all the kids all day long. And so for two years, we went up to Prescott and had a ministry there with Bob and Kathy Terrell. And I started practicing the piano. And I improved my piano skills. And I started playing the piano like three hours a day. And I just loved it. And I had so much fun playing the piano and playing hymn, hymn arrangements. And then while we were going to Prescott, I thought, maybe I could play my violin in the worship team. Well, it wasn't God's timing because I had little cuts on my fingers that just appeared out of nowhere. So I couldn't play the violin during those two years, but I could play the piano fine. Then we came down here. Guess what went away and never came back? The cuts on my fingers. Amazing. God's timing. So here I am with the violin. I never would have dreamed I could do that. And then I thought, it is time to find out what's going on with my vocal cords. I either have throat cancer or nodules or polyps on my vocal cords. I'm not going to sing again. I told everybody my voice has gone to heaven without me. I'll catch up with it someday. <laughs> so I went to the ear, nose, and throat doctor, and he put this thing down my throat, and he said, I know what it is, and I can fix it. He gave me some medicine, and my vocal cords cleared up, and I can sing again. Amazing. So it wasn't God's timing for me to stop singing forever. God leads us to different places to use our skills and gifts and talents to praise and worship with him, to worship him, because he is Lord. And I have a chorus on the PowerPoint, he is Lord, and I'd like us to sing that together. And as we sing it, think of how God, Jesus is Lord, and he has a ministry for you for each one of us, right where we are. Let's sing that together. He is Lord, he is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's my very favorite chorus, and those words are from Philippians chapter 2. The next thing we want to talk about is to pray that God will help you to bloom where you are planted. Don't wait to serve him someday. Maybe someday when things get better, I'll serve the Lord. Maybe someday I'll volunteer more at church. But we need to be ready to serve the Lord right now. Now, I've got another humorous little thing coming up. Sometimes something we think we won't like turns out to be a blessing to us because God knows what's best for us. My husband was at the vet, 
and he said, I have always loved bulldogs. I would love to get a bulldog. Now see, who cannot love that face? <laughs> and the vet said, I just delivered a litter of bulldogs a few weeks ago, and they're for sale. So I'm praying and thinking, oh, Lord, help me to love bulldogs. <laughs> it's not the cutest. It's not like a little French poodle or a little beagle. It's adorable. And so I was praying, and I was looking through a book of Bible promises, praying, Lord, please help me to know if it's your will for us to have a bulldog. And I came to a verse in the Old Testament that said, and the Lord shall increase your livestock. <laughs> well, I remember one time my dad was visiting, and our dogs and cats walked by, and he says, hmm, livestock. <laughs> so, I don't know if I can love a bulldog, but then Bobby brought home the puppy. Oh, isn't that adorable? Totally helpless. I had to pick him up and take him out to go potty. I had to feed him. He didn't know who he was or where he was, and he was ours. Now I call, now she does look like the first picture now, but now I call her my little cupcake. <laughs> she almost died three times, and I, the Lord spoke to me. This dog is a blessing. It's something you didn't think you wanted, but you need it. So, has that ever happened to anyone else? Have you ever had God give you something that you didn't think you wanted? I see some heads nodding. Something you didn't think you wanted to do, but it turned out to be a great blessing from the Lord. So, <laughs> remember that bulldog story. <laughs> okay. While driving home through a construction site one day, Billy Graham's wife found a sign that she told her family to put on her tombstone. It said, end of construction, thank you for your patience. So part of, our, part of God's timing is that we are all under construction. God is working through each of our lives. He's changing us. He's helping us to be, become more like Jesus all the time. And that's one of our goals as a Christian is to be changing and becoming more like Jesus. Another one of my favorite Bible verses is 1 Peter 5, 7. This is about trusting God. Cast all your care on him for he cares for you. That means we can trust him with whatever we're going through. Take whatever you're going through now and lay it at Jesus' feet and lay it on the altar. I heard a joke that the problem with a living sacrifice is it keeps crawling off the altar. And that's really true, isn't it? Oh, Lord, I give you this worry, this anxiety, this concern. Okay, I feel better. Oh, no, I need to keep worrying. I keep, need to keep having fear because that gives, makes me feel like I have power and makes me feel like I'm in control if I'm having fear. <clears throat> so <clears throat> an, ent an event that happened in our family really helps me to understand God's timing, a time to be born and a time to die. And that was about my Uncle Jack. He was a colonel in the Air Force, and during the Vietnam War, he flew a helicopter in Vietnam. Now this, I would assume, was a dangerous thing that he had to do. Very dangerous. People were probably shooting at him. He was probably dealing with anxiety and stress and fear. He sailed through that without any problem at all and came home safe and sound. Then, a few years ago, we got a phone call. He had been killed in a car accident. A neighbor, this was two blocks from his house, a neighbor lady was turning around trying to talk to her children while she was driving and hit them head on. To me, that, that gave me the message that God has the timing, a time to be born and a time to die. It's not going to be what we think. We can spend our life worrying about things that are never going to happen. Or we can trust the Lord and live in freedom and joy and peace. 
and enjoy our lives. Isaiah 41.13 says, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, Fear not, I will help you. Our life on earth is only temporary. We're going to heaven. Whenever something in your body breaks down as you get older, just think of it as one step closer to heaven. <clears throat> there was a joke about a preacher who asked people to stand up if they wanted to go to heaven. Everybody stood up except one little old man. The pastor said, don't you want to go to heaven when you die? The man answered, oh, yes, of course I do want to go when I die. I thought you were getting together a group to go right now. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, God has set eternity in the hearts of men. Isn't that true? In your heart, in your mind, you know that we're not made for this life down here. This is temporary. We are made for heaven. There's more and more books and movies and information coming out, people learning about heaven. And it's so exciting. We are going to heaven. That's going to be our eternal home, and we're going to have glorified bodies, and we'll have peace and joy and love. We were at Chick-fil-A with our grand with our son and daughter-in-law and our two little granddaughters and little stormy was four years old and she, we were in the playroom and she went way up in the tower and she looked down and she said grandma i'm up in heaven with god <laughs> that was so cute <laughs> philippians 3:20 says our citizenship is in heaven i love that verse that always helps you to keep focused and keep anchored we're not meant to stay here on this earth. We have to go through things. We have to go through problems. We have to fight off that fear and anxiety and trust the Lord and remember our citizenship is in heaven. We need to walk with Jesus every day. Begin each day asking God to hold your hand. Then remind yourself throughout the day, just a closer walk with me. Keep walking close to the Lord. Don't let the negative thoughts attack you early in the morning. Reject those. Those are from the enemy. Fear is from the enemy, from Satan. Reject those negative thoughts and claim the victory that God has for us. Another one of my favorite verses is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I've memorized this and meditated on it hundreds of times, and it has really helped me a lot. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Corey Ten Boom was one of the people that really inspired my life and really meant a lot. How many of you knew who Corey Ten Boom was? Yeah, her, her family in Holland um, hid some Jews in their attic during the time of the Holocaust. And then eventually she got thrown in prison with her sister. Her sister died there. And she accidentally was released and had a worldwide ministry telling her story. And the main point of her story was there is no pit so deep that Jesus is not deeper still. But one of the things that she did was she showed a piece of embroidery when she was talking to a group. And she showed the back of it, like the picture we have here. This is the way we often feel about our lives. Our lives are tangled and confusing, and it doesn't make sense. Why did my friend die of cancer, but I didn't? Why? Lord, what are you doing? What is your purpose? And then she turns it over and shows the front, and that's what God sees. He sees the total picture for your life. He sees all the things that he wants to do in your life, all the things, the blessings he has for you. John 16, 33 is another great verse. It says, in me you may have peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation, trials, distress, and frustrations, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. What is he telling us to do? Be of good cheer. You mean it's okay to be happy? When I was the, doing the 
chaplain in the hospital service, I met a young woman who had lost her baby. They flew her in from a hospital from Prescott to get her down as fast as we could, and her baby died. She had, I sat and visited with her for an hour and let her just pour out her story. She had two boys at home, and she said, is it okay if I'm happy again, even though I've lost this baby? And I said, yes. Don't feel guilty if you have happiness and joy in your life, in spite of the bad things that happen. Next is one of my very favorite verses. I have had this verse in my mind constantly for several months. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, or in some translations, self-control. So where does that spirit come from? It just says that God didn't give it to us. It comes from Satan. It comes from the enemy. So rebuke it. Say no to it. Don't accept it. And then 1 John 4, 18 and 19, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. God is not trying to scare us. He wants us to follow him out of love, not fear. So to overcome fear, if you're struggling with that, and I think we all are sometimes, think more about his love. He loves us, and he wants what's best for us. When we're going through trials and problems, let the Lord give you peace. And the next scripture I have is John 14, 27. This has got a powerful message. Peace I live... Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. If you, take, if you have a pen or pencil, if you circle the words let not and neither let it, you can see that it's our choice. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I even, I started getting nervous this morning about preaching today. And I started getting anxiety, and I, I said that verse, let not your heart be troubled. And that anxiety went away. Neither let it be afraid. So you've, we've got to hold on to God's promises. And I hope these scriptures and stories have been a blessing to you. We can trust God's timing in our lives because he is Lord. Fear evaporates when we trust God. And just like with David and Goliath, the size of the enemy doesn't matter to God. We're going to sing a song now in his time. And please sing it together with us.
Let's bow our heads. And there's one more Bible verse at the end. There it is. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. <laughs>